Hello everyone, I'm Nathan P. Butler. This is my blog, The Voice of Reason or Lack Thereof. Thank you for watching. This is the second of two blogs based around my new book, A Saga on Home Video, A Fan's Guide to U.S. Star Wars Home Video Releases. Uh, available through Amazon.com as we speak. Uh, history meets product guide meets, at the end, checklist to help you in your own Star Wars home video collecting based out of my extensive collection. Uh, nearly 295 pages. I want to say it's 294 when all is said and done, uh, including front matter and over 300 images in the book. I think you'll find it uh, an interesting read if you're a fan of Star Wars and home video. One of the most common questions that I get about the book is, what about the future? Because you're putting this out in May of 2017, right? The week of May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. Yeah, that's lovely and all. Except we know that, yeah, you can cover Rogue One because that was released the previous month. But what about later this year? There's going to be Season 3 of Rebels released. Eventually, they're going to do a second Freemaker Adventures season. How is that going to be covered? What about Forces of Destiny? Will that cartoon series eventually be on home video? Probably. What happens then? Uh, what about future movies? We know that around the same time next year, you'll be out of date a little bit because, well, they will have released The Last Jedi, and then the Han Solo movie after that, and then Episode 9 after that, and so on and so on and so on. Star Wars Home Video isn't stopping. So how do you make a book for a specific period of time and then just kind of stop it? And can you expand beyond that? Is there anywhere for it to go in the future? And if so, how? How does that wind up working? And I would say, you're right. You're right. Uh, any type of product guide is going to eventually be out of date because of what is available out there continuing to be released. The only way you can do a product guide that is never going to be able to be out of date is if you have a product guide that's looking at a product line that has already ended. And Star Wars is far, far, far from being over. And any new releases could pop up and wind up being something that you weren't able to include. For instance, uh, I got it ready in the middle of April, basically, once the Rogue One UK stuff was in my hands, put that together, and by the last week of April, first week of May, I was doing all the proofing to get the final copy out there, which meant that there's one thing that otherwise I might have covered in a sidebar, because it's not a U.S. release, it was not something I would consider required for the book, that I might have included was this, the Rogue One Premium Limited Box from Movie Next from Japan. But this didn't come out until the proofing was already underway and we were getting ready for publication. So in Japan, there's already something kind of sitting there that wasn't really able to be included. Um, but we know that later this year there will be Rebels Season 3. And then who knows what comes next beyond that when it comes to what the next home video release is. But about a year from now we can expect The Last Jedi on home video, and so on and so on. Again, a product guide is great at the time, but eventually will be out of date because new stuff gets released in that product line. And unless you're a website rather than a book, there just isn't really a way to keep up with that without thinking ahead to, is there a question of new editions or something like that in the future? Now, in looking at that question and thinking about that question, I looked at the example of Jeffrey Todd Carlton's Star Wars Super Collector's Wish Book, which is a very large book, hardback, kind of expensive as it comes out, but it's all in color, which began quite a while ago. This is the Star Wars Super Collector's Wish Book First Edition. It wasn't called First Edition at the time, but it was the first edition. This was released in 2002. Then enough new material was released that he then put out a second edition in 2003. A third edition in 2005. A fourth edition to which I contributed in 2007. And a fifth edition in 2010 before deciding to take all the action figures out of it because there were so freaking many of them and actually have two different ones, one for action figures and then one that was for basically everything else which was released in, let's see here, last one was 2010, 20. 11. So based on that pattern, we saw these relatively heavy, relatively expensive collector's books and collector's guides being released for Star Wars product lines either every year, every other year, or at most with a three-year gap. So that's kind of the way that those books tend to be, it seems. But then I sat back and thought about it and thought, well, in relation to Star Wars Home Video, one of the things we talk about a lot, and with Star Wars in general, is this double-dipping thing. The idea of, hey, buy this and then later uh, buy it again. And all we're going to do is change a little bit of the content, so you're losing a little bit of what you got before, but you're gaining something new, so please buy this movie for like the fifth time over again. 
which is always a very frustrating type of thing. You see this sometimes with Star Wars books, and sometimes, though, there's good reason for it, because, again, they're based on product lines, or they're based on the idea of sort of an ongoing history of something that hasn't ended yet. One of my favorite Star Wars books, for reference, is Star Wars Year by Year. This was released back in 2010, and it covered all the events, all the big key events throughout the Star Wars development cycle from 1976 or 75, uh, the production side of things, up through the release of the films, all the way up to essentially present day as of its publication. But then time passed. More things happened, and in 2012, they released Star Wars Year by Year, a Visual Chronicle updated edition. But then by 2016, even more stuff had happened, and we got the Star Wars Year by Year, a Visual History updated and expanded edition. Again, a pattern being set that if you're doing something that is basically historical, or something that's about a product line that's ongoing, you see multiple editions over time. It's really just a question of at what point is there enough new material to justify a new edition. You also, of course, have that question of what's included and what's removed. It bothers me to no end that the Star Wars character encyclopedia that was released has a bunch of cool characters in it, and then there's an updated version of it, an updated and expanded version of it that comes out a while later, is that this updated and expanded version has actually cut a bunch of characters to make room for new ones. So it's sort of updated and contracted and expanded at the same time. I don't like the idea of new editions of things dumping material instead of just adding material on top of what was there to give you even more value for what you're seeing. I really like the approach they took on home video with the The Force Awakens 3D Collector's Edition. Because remember, this was the first time there was ever a Star Wars home video release where all the bonus features from the previous release were included on the new one, just with extra stuff lumped onto it, rather than it being some stuff's taken away, some stuff is added in, which frustrates collectors to no end. So with all those things in mind, what's the plan for this sucker? What's the plan for this book based on the way that it's formatted as a history? Seven chapters detailing the live-action films as they go from Super 8 all the way up through Blu-ray 3D and such, and then following ones, one chapter at a time, looking at Clone Wars and Rebels, uh, another chapter that combines together the Ewoks telemovies, Ewoks droids, and the Clone Wars micro-series, a catch-all chapter, and so on and so on. What about something like this? Well, the good news is, because this is paperback, this is not something that's as expensive as the Super Collector's Wish Book, or year by year. It's not something you're going to be dropping uh, tens of dollars on, as the case may be. Again, the list price for this right now is $12.99. By comparison, one of those Sequart volumes of Star Wars Essays, $16.99. Using CreateSpace, I have more control over the profit margin and the prices to be able to offer it at a lower price than a lot of comparable publications that are out there. Um, so in that sense, I think I'm kind of keeping the cost angle down as much as I can for right now. Um, but the question is, you know, would there be another edition? What's the way to approach it? I've had people suggest to me, why don't you just wait until there's a way to make a volume two that doesn't cover anything that's in here, only covers new stuff. To do that would take at least a decade, if not more, because this is four decades worth of home video releases. So unless I branched out and bought a whole bunch of stuff from foreign markets or just waited for new releases over the span of the next 10, 20, 30 years, Covering the new stuff would never happen because there wouldn't get to a point where there's a justification for a volume two that is completely different than this, just building on where this one leaves off. Not to mention, I don't like the idea of doing something like that because if you're just talking about the new stuff, you lose all the context historically that this provides to the narrative. Why have a chapter in here that covers the first two seasons of Rebels and chapters in another book later that have the second two seasons of Rebels? Well, that's lovely and all, except you need the context of the first two to understand how it has evolved into the latter two when it comes to home video releases. Um, so that sort of drops the idea of having just some type of extended volume two sometime in the future to just build on this and not touch any of the same material over again. Instead, that brings us to the issue of editions, like with year by year, like with what we got uh, with Jeffrey Todd Carlton's great Star Wars Super Collector's Wish Book. And the question then becomes, will there be further editions where you would basically revise this and add even more stuff and release it? My answer to that is probably yes. I do think that is likely to happen. The question then is, how often? We're Star Wars home video fans. We do double dipping all the time, though we cringe at it. This is 
Kind of a double dipping thing if you're going to ask me to go in and buy a new edition, although you'll have a lot of new content in it. Um, how do you justify this and how often? How often, I don't know. My answer would be kind of like with year by year. Once there's enough new releases to justify it. Uh, it could be within a year. It could be within two years or three years. Could be more. It depends on what do we see in the Star Wars home video market in the U.S.? What's being added to it? What new releases are there? What new things can I bring in as context, maybe from other countries as well? I don't want to set a set time period to how long to expect it to be before there's a second edition. I don't want to set a set number of pages to it. 50 new pages of content, does that justify it? 20, 30, 100? Uh, it all well, depends. What is that covering? Uh, what are the pages? Are they pages of images? Are they pages of checklists? Are they pages of real content? Um, so at some point, I would assume there'll be a second edition. I just don't know when, but I will continuously over time make sure to keep grabbing pictures and such so that when the time comes to do that, it's a lot more straightforward and quick of a process than it was doing this initial work. And what I will do, because this is something that drives collectors of home video stuff nuts, and I want to be able to give you some assurance here that uh, this isn't just someone who would be taking advantage of things if there is a second or third or whatever it is edition someday in the future, uh, and that is this. I will treat that book like you treat, or like uh, Walt Disney Home Video treated the 3D version of The Force Awakens. I will guarantee you that in a second edition, third edition, fourth, however many editions it goes over however many years or decades, I guarantee you I will never remove product coverage from the book. There'll be points where there might be something that needs to be revised. Like when it finally, uh, when we finally see a Star Wars release in 4K on Ultra Blu-ray, Ultra HD Blu-ray, UHD, then yeah, the little section about how Star Wars isn't on UHD yet, but what it is needs to go. But it'll be replaced by coverage of actual products that fit that product line. If I go back and I wind up revising or adding something to coverage, say, of Rebels or of VHDs or whatever, it'll be added coverage, not removing content. And if I'm going to go in and add some sidebars with new examples of things, say, from Japan or the UK or wherever, it's not going to be at the expense of, oh, well, I need the space and remove old things. I guarantee you that each new edition will not require you to own any previous editions to be able to get the full amount of information that's being provided. Um, in that sense, again, kind of like this thing, because I don't want to be someone who has you have to own a bookshelf of all the different versions of his book to be able to get all the content, because I think that is kind of asinine. So if I were to guess, I would say at least a year will pass. Um, I would guess probably actually more than that. We're probably looking at you know, a year or more. Uh, it really kind of depends on the home video schedule of Han Solo in Episode Nine. Um, I don't know that there'll be enough new content to justify a new edition before then, or me having the time to do a new edition before then. So for now, this will be our definitive work, the only edition. And as new releases come out that aren't covered by it, of course, you'll still see them covered in my traditional way. I'm from the Star Wars Home Video Library until someday in the future, there's enough new content to justify a second edition where you'll be able to see coverage of those newer items in print. But for now, video uh, will be the way to go for those new things. Okay? Hopefully that answers that question in a relatively thorough way uh, that doesn't uh, cause any consternation here. Feel free to ask questions in the comments. Give your thoughts. If you have other suggestions of ways to do it that would work just as well or better, feel free to make the, uh, the suggestion down there in the comments. I'll check those out. I'll be keeping an eye on those, of course, as I do with all the comments on the channel uh, as we move ahead. Again, thank you all for watching. Again, the book is called A Saga on Home Video, A Fan's Guide to U.S. Star Wars Home Video Releases, available now on Amazon, A History of Star Wars Home Video from the U.S., done as a history slash product guide with lots of checklists at the end to help you collect for yourself. Thanks for watching. This will end this episode of the vlog and the duo of episodes on the book.